In this example, a scatter plot has been configured to show the distribution of price versus demand for wine grapes. On this page, we will adjust the transparency of markers in an effort to more closely examine the density of data in these two dimensions. We'll go to the Properties dialog box and to the Appearance section. If we slide the Properties dialog box to the upper right corner and resize the dialog, we will be able to evaluate the impact on the scatter plot markers as we move the transparency slider to the right. Note that as we make these markers more transparent, the areas where markers overlap are indicated as darker regions. It is important to achieve a balance point for this transparency, as too much transparency will fade non-overlapping data to the point of invisibility, and too little transparency will not highlight the overlapping data. In addition to finding the right setting for the transparency slider, you may also visit the Size section of the Properties dialog and adjust the marker size in an effort to optimize the degree of overlap for the markers in close proximity. You may also find it beneficial to adjust the marker color in order to enhance the visual impact of overlapping markers. We'll set the color of markers in this scatter plot to black. The resulting scatter plot in this example shows a large number of low-priced grapes across the full range of demand values a high density of values in this moderately priced, low demand area, and a few clusters of high priced grapes which occur at this lower end of the demand range. There is another option for configuring a scatter plot to evaluate the density of data in these two dimensions. On this page, we return to a simple scatter plot view where each row of data represents a marker and the position of each marker is based upon the price and demand of a particular wine grape. Again, we'll enter the Properties dialog for this visualization and perform several steps in order to achieve the ultimate configuration of this density plot. We'll start with the x-axis section and adjust this selector to view in expanded mode so that we can auto-bin the values in the demand column. If we close the selector dialog, we can double-click on the bin slider handle in order to enter a specific number of bins. We will type 100. We will do the same thing in the y-axis section opening the selector in order to auto-bin the price values. However, this time after we check the auto-bin box, let's edit the expression in order to set the number of bins to 100. After we apply that edited expression and close the selector dialog, we will go to the marker by section and remove row number as the variable which groups data to define each marker. This allows the X and Y bins we have created to determine the marker groupings. Markers are currently displayed as circles within this 100 by 100 grid. However, if we go to the Shape section, we can change the shape to Tiled Markers. This option displays markers as rectangular tiles, which fill the available space defined by each occupied cell within the 100 by 100 grid. Now we will represent the data density at each of these grid cell locations by color. If we use the selector in the Colors section to instruct color to reflect the row count, when we close the selector dialog, we have the opportunity to use the wide range of color scheme options, including these pre-configured color schemes, or the ability to define our own color scheme, which specifically suits the data we are evaluating relative to our unique data analysis goals. Note that, in addition to the ability to configure a color scheme, which highlights the frequency of distribution of interest, we also have the ability to adjust the number of bins for both the X and Y dimensions of this data density grid in order to achieve the resolution which suits our analytical needs. And of course, with either of these scatter plot configurations, you have all of TIBCO Spotfire's interactive analysis capabilities at your fingertips, which can be applied in order to further refine your evaluation of data density and its relationship to other variables. For example, we could focus only on grapes grown in coastal regions by filtering away the grapes grown in the valley, or we could trellis to separate grapes grown for red wine versus those grown for white wine. On the previous page, perhaps we are interested in applying variety as a trellis variable. You may find that these types of adjustments require that you revisit the Properties dialog, Size section, where you will readjust the Marker Size slider in order to continue to achieve data overlap such that it highlights areas of data density.